good morning good evening good afternoon and whichever time you're watching this welcome to ssc and welcome to the 34th day of static gk quiz show in which we shall be discussing 20 mcqs on history polity geography and general science so let's proceed uh, to buy a full video course on modern history geography polity and various other subjects as well uh, each at 1200 per course you can send a message to this whatsapp number there are total of 20 questions in today's session i request everyone to please participate in the quiz the pdf of entire series it will cost you 300 rupees for this send a message to this whatsapp number so history it's the continuation from the year 33 and let me tell you that the all of history section all five questions are previous year questions okay from under secretary 2017 prelims so please have a close look on it the first question who among the following moved capital from delhi to dolatabad the options are there The correct answer to this question is Mohammed bin Tuklak. As I was saying, this question has been asked in under Secretary Prelims 2017. So Mohammed bin Tuklak was the one who captured, uh, who shifted the capital from Delhi to Devagiri. Tuklak was the ruler of Delhi Sultanate. Let's learn a little bit about Delhi Sultanate. Delhi Sultanate, it was an Islamic empire based in Delhi that stretched over large parts of the Indian subcontinent for 300 and 20 years okay following the invasion of south asia by gurid dynasty five dynasties ruled over the delhi sultanate sequentially and which were those dynasty mamluk khilji tughlaq Said, and the last dynasty of delhi sultanate was lodi dynasty okay so this was about the delhi sultanate let's go to the next question in the revolt of 1857 the sepoys stationed at Meerut had revolted against what the options are there this question is a previous year question under section 2017 and your time begins now the revolt of 1857 why did the sepoys station at mirut revolt what was the reason the main reason the correct answer to this question is their religious sentiment being offended. Also, other reasons were also there like uh, not paid the salary on time, not being allowed to go home, not being given adequate food. All these issues were there. But the primary reason for which the sepoys started the revolt was uh, their religious sentiments was, were being offended. Uh, how it was getting offended? Let's see. The revolt was started in Meerut. It began as a revolt of the sepoys of the British East India Company army but eventually secured participation of the masses so the revolt initially was from the sepoys of the East India Company but uh, gradually masses also participated the issue of greased cartridges and military grievances has been overemphasized as the factor of revolt if 1857 so this greased cartridges what does it mean a uh, rumor was spread between the sepoys that cartridges were greased with cow fat and pick a uh, lot to keep them dry so because of this uh, this insulted the religious sentiment of both the hindu hindu because uh, hindu considered cow as holy animal and pigs uh, because pigs were considered dirty by muslims so this is the reason uh, the uh, religious sentiments of both hindus and muslim got uh, hurt and they got offended and it started as the uh, ignition to the revolt. Various other reasons were also there, but this was the main reason which gave the ignition to the revolt of 1857. Okay, hope it's clear. Let's go to the next question. The main reason for Dandi March led by Mahatma Gandhi in 1930 was what? I think this everybody knows it. The options are there. Please answer quickly. Dandi March. It's related to what? The correct answer to this question is imposition of salt tax. Okay, it's also known as salt satyagraha, dandi march, dandi satyagraha. It was an act of non violent civil disobedience in colonial India led by Mahatma Gandhi. And uh, this was a 24 day long march. Okay, it lasted from 12th March to 6th of April 1930 as a direct action campaign for tax resistance and non violent protest against the British salt monopoly okay so this was about salt tax let's go to the 
next question azad hind force was founded by netaji subhas chandra bose in which of the given countries the options are there burma vietnam malaysia or singapore the correct answer to this question is singapore this is also previous question it was it is also known as azad hind force it was established on 21st october 1943 in singapore okay so this was this is also previous question asked in under secretary prelims next the famous chinese pilgrim fa hen visited india during the reign of uh, which of the following rulers the options are there and your time begins now chandragupta 1 chandragupta 2 रामागुप्त और श्रीगुप्त करेक्ट आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन इज चंद्रगुप्त टू ओके चंद्रगुप्त टू वॉज द थर्ड रूलर ऑफ गुप्ता डायनेस्टी ओके सो दिस क्वेश्चन वॉज ऑल्सो आस्ट इन अंडर सेक्टर प्रोग्राम ट्वेंटी सेवेंटीन सो फा साइन ऑल्सो रेफर टू एज फा हाइन और फा साइन और सेही ही वॉज अ चाइनीज बुद्धिस्ट मॉन्ग एंड ट्रांसलेटर हु ट्रेवल्ड बाई फुट फ्रॉम चाइना टू इंडिया to acquire buddhist text okay so fa hen visited uh, during the reign of chandragupta second okay the third ruler of gupta dynasty the first is chandragupta one the second is samudragupta and the third one is chandragupta two okay hope it's clear let's go to the next section we complete history we come to polity now the first question which is the smallest lok sabha constituency in general election by the number of electors okay in terms of number of electors smallest lok sabha constituency in general election in terms of number of electors the correct answer is lakshadweep okay lakshadweep is the smallest parliamentary constituency okay hope it's clear there are total of uh, 47972 electors as of 20th march 2014 okay so this is it let's go to the next question which group of the following articles of the indian constitution contains directive principle of state policies the options are there and your time begins now 36 to 51 28 to 48 article 42 to 56 or article 30 to 49 the correct answer is article 36 to 51 okay the directive uh, principles of state policy of india they are the guidelines to be followed by the government of india for the governance of the country but they are not enforceable by any court okay so this is it article 36 to 51 more details on the screen next all of the following article of the constitution is directed to establish uniform civil code the options are there and your time begins now uniform civil code article 45 article 39 article 44 and article 40 the correct answer to this question is article 44 okay the code comes under article 44 of the constitution which lays down that the state uh, state shall endeavor to secure a uniform civil code for citizen throughout the territory of india so uh, till now uniform civil code has not been uh, applied okay it has not been implemented but uh, rumors are there that very soon this will be done so let's see what happens let's go to the next question for now which of the following supreme court decision stated that the dpsp that is directive policy of principles of state policy cannot override fundamental rights so which of the following supreme court decision stated this that dpsp cannot override fundamental rights the options are there your time begins now state of madras versus champakam dorai rajan केशवानंद भारती वर्सेस स्टेट ऑफ केरल मिनर्वा मेल्स वर्सेस यूनियन ऑफ इंडिया मोहम्मद सलीमुल्लाह वर्सेस यूनियन ऑफ इंडिया द करेक्ट आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन इज ए ओके ए इज द करेक्ट आंसर इट इट्स बी रिटन हियर आई विल करेक्ट इट सो स्टेट ऑफ मद्रास वर्सेस चंपकम दोराय राजन इन दिस केस सुप्रीम कोर्ट स्टेटेड द डिसीजन ऑफ द सुप्रीम कोर्ट स्टेटेड दैट द डायरेक्टिव प्रिंसिपल cannot override fundamental rights okay so let's see other cases uh, first of all case of anand bharati case versus state of kerala this is uh, this is a landmark case okay in the history of indian constitution in the history of india case of anand bharati versus uh, state of kerala it is also known as case of anand bharati judgment it was a landmark decision of the supreme court of india it outlined the basic structure doctrine of indian constitution this case is also known as 
fundamental right case okay so it it basically was related with fundamental right so this is it uh, minerva mills limited uh, this this is also a case versus uh, union of india it's a landmark decision of supreme court of india which applied and evolved basic structure doctrine okay so this was about minerva mills and this third case which is mohammed salimullah versus union of india it's a petition challenging the deportation of rohingya muslims who had taken refuge in india okay so these uh, muslims were getting deported uh, to uh, myanmar okay to because they had taken refugee in india to escape persecution in myanmar and they now had been deported so this was the case the court however in the interim order rejected any relief and allowed their deportation subject to proper procedure being followed okay so the deportation uh, should be stopped uh, this was the case but the court did not uh, accept this and the court rejected any relief okay and they were allowed to deport so hope it's clear uh, these are the different cases let's go to the next question currently there are how many members in election commission this one is easy election commission how many members are there main members one two three or four the correct answer to this question is three everybody knows that there is one chief election commissioner in election commission and who is rajiv kumar and there are two election commissioners right now who is anup chandra pandey and anup arun goel okay all both of these are incumbent election commissioners and the chief election commissioner is rajiv kumar before this it was sushil chandra okay so this is it three people now we come to geography first question consider the following statements the first statement it's a statement based question the first statement is it forms the highest mountain range okay it's about uh, himalayan range okay himalayan range uh, it forms which means himalayan range forms the highest mountain range in the world extending 2500 km over northern india this is the first statement the second statement is it is bounded by indus river in the west and brahmaputra in the east the three parallel ranges himadri himachal and shivaliks have deep canyon gorged by the rivers flowing into the gangetic plain which of the above uh, statements are correct is the question which is being asked the time begins now if only one is correct if only two is correct if both are correct or if none of them is correct the correct answer is both are correct okay uh, himalayan range is the highest mountain range in, uh, range in the world it is correct it is extending 2500 km over northern india this is also correct it's bounded by indus river in the west and brahmaputra in the east correct and there are three parallel ranges himadri himachal and shivaliks okay himadri upper himalayas himachal middle himalayas shivalik lower himalayas so this is also correct and they are canyon uh, gauzed by the rivers flowing into the gangetic plain so hope it's clear let's go to the next question the river narmata originates from which of these the options are there and your time begins now river narmata the correct answer to this question is amar kartak okay river narmata originates from amar kartak so narmata river it is also called riva previously known as narmata and uh, anglicized as narbuta okay it means uh, the english tongue is given to this narbuta it's the fifth longest river and overall longest west flowing river in india so uh, the, uh, out of uh, indian rivers it's the fifth longest river and uh, the river which is west flowing it's the I means among the river which is west flowing it's the longest one okay so this is it let's see about other rivers as well so these are the top 10 rivers uh, of uh, india in terms of length let's see the first i think everybody knows it's ganga okay it's the lengthiest river in india and then godavari is the second lengthiest river krishna is the third lengthiest yamuna is the fourth narmada is fifth okay which was the answer to the previous question and in this it's sixth brahmaputra seventh mahanadi eighth kaveri ninth tapti ten let's go to the next question Mountain ranges in the eastern part of India forming its boundary with Myanmar are collectively known as what? The options are there and your time begins now. Mountain ranges in the eastern part of India 
forming its boundary with Myanmar are collectively known as what? Himachal, Purvanchal, Uttaranchal, none of these. I think it's clear, okay, eastern parts, eastern means uh, Purva, okay, in Hindi we call it Purva, in Hindi or Nepali, okay, so which means Purvanchal is the correct, okay, eastern part of India, uh, mountain range in east, eastern part of India are known as Purvanchal, okay, they are forming boundary with Myanmar, they are collectively known as eastern hills also. Hope it's clear, next question. The western coastal strip south of Goa is referred to as what? The western coastal strip, strip south of Goa. Koromandal, Kannad, Konkan or Northern Sarkar. It's Kannad. Okay, Kannad is the western coastal strip south of Goa. Let's go to the last question of geography. So the 15th question, the highest peak in the eastern ghats is which the options are there and your time begins now the highest peak in the eastern ghats anaimudi mahendragiri kanchenjunga or khasi the correct answer to this question is mahendragiri okay mahendragiri is the highest peak in eastern ghats so with this we complete geography now we have general science from this session onwards we are doing general science session as well okay so let's proceed towards general science session which of the following is a large blood vessel that carries blood away from the heart? The options are there and time begins now. We are discussing biology in today's session. Large blood vessel which carried blood away from the heart. The correct answer is artery. Okay, artery is the large blood vessel which carry blood away from the heart and veins are the blood vessels which carry blood towards the heart. Okay, so this is it. Let's go to the next question. Which of the following is not a member of vitamin B complex? Vitamin B complex. The options are there. Thiamine, riboflavin, folic acid or ascorbic acid. The correct answer is ascorbic acid. What is vitamin B complex? Vitamin B complex, it consists of total of 8 vitamins. Okay, 8 vitamins are there in vitamin B. B complex. It's a complex of vitamins, eight vitamins, which are those B1, B2, B3, B5, B6, B7, B9, and B12. So all these are the notations for different uh, vitamins like vitamin B1 is thiamine, vitamin B2 is riboflavin, B3 is niacin, uh, B5 is pantothenic acid, B6 is py uh, pyridoxine, B7 biotin, B9 folic acid, and B12 is cyanocobalamin. Uh, okay, so these are the eight vitamins so ascorbic acid is not among this uh, b complex vitamins so this is it next question fungi are plants that lack what the options are there and your time begins now fungi are plants that lack what do they lack oxygen do they lack carbon dioxide do they lack chlorophyll or none of this the correct answer is chlorophyll okay so fungi are uh, the uh, plants okay or the organisms which do not have chlorophyll so that's why they absorb food from the dead organic matter so since they do not have uh, chlorophyll they absorb food from organic matter so this is it let's go to the second last question which of the following is an airborne disease airborne disease means diseases which spread uh, spread through air okay uh, which of these measles typhoid cholera or none of the above airborne disease The correct answer is measles okay airborne diseases are the infection that's spread by airborne transmission okay through air and uh, those diseases are chicken pox anthrax influenza measles spong, uh, smallpox cryptococcus and tuberculosis okay tuberculosis everyone knows it's an airborne disease so this is it a uh, typhoid and cholera are waterborne okay they spread through contaminated water so the last question of today's session which blood vessel have the smallest diameter the options are there and your time begins now capillaries arterioles venules or lymphatic smallest diameter the correct answer is capillaries okay blood is carried through the body by blood vessels everybody knows with the help of perfusion process capillaries supply blood to the tissues the diameter of the capillary ranges from 5 to 10 
micrometers okay so this is the diameter of a capillary so 5 to 10 micrometers is extremely uh, extremely in, uh, small measurement uh, if we uh, divide one meter scale into one million parts then uh, that one part of those one million parts is one micrometer okay just imagine one mil one meter scale divided into one million that is 10 lakh part and one part is a one micrometer so it's just 5 to 10 micrometers diameter okay so hope it's clear with this we complete today's session thank you so much don't forget to like share and subscribe to ssc second bye bye